Hi everyone. In these series of videos, I am going to describe the commonly used qualitative research designs. To keep the videos short and engaging, I will take one research design in a video. I will start with the case study method today. That is using case studies as a type of qualitative research design. In further videos, I will take up the other methods like ethnography, phenomenological study, content analysis, grounded theory, so on. So let's understand the case study method first. Case study or inner case study, which is also sometimes called a ideographic research. A particular individual program or event is studied in depth for a defined period of time. For example, a medical researcher might study the nature, course and treatment of a rare illness for a particular patient. An educator might study and analyze the instructional strategies that a teacher uses to teach high school history. Or a political scientist might study the origins and development of a politician's campaign as he or she runs for public office. Case studies are common not only in medicine, education and political science, but also in law, psychology, sociology and anthropology. Sometimes researchers focus on a single case, perhaps because its unique or exceptional qualities can promote understanding or inform practice for similar situations. At other times, researchers study two or more cases, often cases that are either similar or different in certain key ways to make comparison, build theory or propose generalization. Such an approach is called a multiple or a collective case study. In a typical case study, the researcher collects extensive data on the individual or individuals, program or programs or event or events on which the investigation is focused. These data often include observations, interviews, documents such as newspaper articles, past records such as previous, uh, let's say, student test scores, and audiovisual materials such as photographs, videotapes, audio tapes. In many case studies, the researcher spends an extended period of time on site and regularly interacts with the people or the persons being studied. The researcher also records details about the context surrounding the case or case of focus, including information about the physical environment and any historical, economic and social factors that have bearing on the situation. So physical surroundings, including economic, social or historical factors. I thought I should write it down in case you have missed it. By portraying such context, the researcher helps others who later read the research report to draw conclusions about the extent to which the study's findings might be generalizable to other situations. A case study may be especially suitable for learning more about a little known or a poorly understood situation. It can also be appropriate for investigating how an individual or program has changed over time, perhaps as a result of certain conditions or a result of an intervention that was introduced to create that change. In either circumstance, it tends to be the most useful for generating or providing preliminary support for one or more hypothesis regarding the phenomenon being studied. The major limitation of a case study is especially when only single case studies are involved when we cannot be sure that the findings are generalizable to other situations. So if you are using a case study method, I suggest that you read up on the limitations use an extensive number of case studies or create a comparative study where case studies are compared 
try not to use or try not to be relied only on the case study method if you can however there are certain types of research where you can only use case studies because you cannot collect data in today's environment however please discuss with your supervisor and advisors as well as to how you can go about using the case study method thank you for watching this video and bye for now